Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Welcome to my ham shack. Today I want to figure out just how much power my radio is pulling out of my battery, and I'm going to check it on every single band. Did you know that it is a different amount of power consumption on different bands, on different modes? I always heard about it, but I wasn't 100% sure. So sometimes when your battery is getting really low, you need to know this information so you can switch over to the least power consuming band and mode. And the way I'm going to do that is with this battery monitor, sometimes called a shunt, from our friends over at Batrur. Let's get over to the workbench and see what this thing's all about. All right, let's see what comes inside this box. Of course, we get a user manual. Of course, we always do. Well, not always, but it tells you everything you need to know, especially about how to wire this thing up. And that is ultra important. We get six meters of cable. This is the cable that runs from the shunt itself to the monitor so you have six meters to play with. Some mounting screws, little itty bitty screwdriver, it's so cute. We have a red wire. Why do we have a red wire? Let's see what our manual says. I mean, I'm gonna show you anyway, but play in the game. Okay, so the red wire comes from the battery plus to the B plus connector on the shunt itself. And then the negative wire goes through the shunt. So this is passing all of your negative current through the shunt to your device. How long is this one? This one here should be shorter because this should go very close to the battery. And we're gonna do this one in feet because we did the other one in meters. It's just a hair over three feet. We have a display. That's where the battery connector goes. And then this has like a snap mount to mount it inside of something there. There is our, whoo, that is, that's pretty heavy duty. That, that's pretty heavy duty. So you see all of those little guys under there? Those guys there are for the power to travel through so that it can be monitored and sent out to the battery. Do we have, we have nothing else in there. And this is why we do the unboxings because we are missing something when it comes to doing this. I need some battery jumpers so that I can connect my battery terminals here. So I need one coming from the battery to here and then I need one coming from here to my load. All right, let's go shopping. We are freshly back from the jungle market and I have that battery jumper that I needed. And I have a battery over here so we can get this thing all wired up. First, I want to hook up the positive side because I'm a positive kind of guy and the positive side is kind of easier to hook up. So I'm going to have my Anderson power pole jumper to connect to my radio. And then I'm going to have the positive battery lead. Is this the right size? Oh, it is exactly the right size. And this is probably just to power the shunt itself. All right. And then I need to take this and plug it in. And we have two terminals here and they're both labeled B+. So that's going to make it really easy to pick one. And we'll have to use that cute little screwdriver that they gave us. He's so cute. Perfect. Let's put that wire in there. Nope, not opened enough. And then we need to take our negative cable and hook that onto our negative battery terminal. And then that goes on to B- on the shunt. Oh, that's a big boy. I need, I need bigger tools. Let's get these guys loosened up here. So as I was saying, before I was interrupted with needing more parts, I'm gonna go ahead and put that between there. This goes on the B minus side and it is the wrong size. Okay, back to the jungle market. And we're back with another battery cable. And then again, back to the B minus side of the shunt. Now I bet this is too big for my power pole connector too. Power pole connector, then the lock washer. And you can put those on in your preferred order. This is just a quick test. And so what I have is a negative cable from the battery going to the B minus side. And then I have my load side, which goes into my Anderson power pole connector. And I'm gonna be testing this out with a radio here. And then this here goes to the power connector here. And then lastly, we need to power up the shunt itself with our big six meter long cable. So there goes that one. And you get to watch it plug in at the same time I do. There we go. Oh, look at that. It's a nice green color. Zero amp hour, zero percent. 13.1 volts coming in, no amps, and then nine watts, which is this display itself. So this is what they would call a parasitic load. Eight is your brightness on your display, I bet. Yep. 
We want all the brightness. Get that out of the way before I get yelled at. Press and hold the button for two seconds to enter the settings. So I need to know the settings from my battery. All right, so let's go through the setup parameters together. We need to press and hold the button OK for two seconds to enter the settings. All right, so I had to tap it first to, to tell it that I was tapping it, and then I had to tap it for two seconds. So now we've got capacity, and our battery is 125 amps. So we press Enter on that, and it takes us right back out. That's not the right way to do it. Press the OK button to move through the menu options, and this gets me over to there. We do two. 125. And then we long press OK to get back out of the individual option. Full voltage. So I got to look in my capacity of this battery and see if it tells me full. It tells me nominal and it tells me charging voltage, but it doesn't tell me full voltage. Charging, discharging, under, recovery. Okay, there we go. I just had to keep digging. So 100% state of charge is 13.33. So we do oh, short press on the OK button. So 13. 0.3 volts, long press to save, and then where is it dead? 0% state of charge is 10 to 12 volts. I'm gonna set it to 10. So short press to get in, set that to 10, long press to save, and then power off. I guess anything below 10, where do I want it to shut off to save my battery? There is a low voltage disconnect at 10.8. So I'm gonna have to set, I'm gonna have to set the other one up a little bit higher. So 10.9. Well, I don't know. Let's do 10.0 is the zero when we're totally empty. And then let's tell it to power off at 10, 10.8, like it says in the manual there. Long press to save. And then we're back at the beginning. So we're reading 13.1 volts and it needs to get to know the battery a little bit. And now for your radio monitoring enjoyment, I have the Yezu FT857. And immediately you can see that we're pulling out 0.65 amps at 8.64 watts. So a little over half an amp just to have the radio on and doing nothing. I've got this in AM mode. I've got it into a dummy load and we are on 80 meters. So if we key up, we should see these two numbers here at the bottom change. So there you go. I always thought it took more power. That's minus 7.86 amps and 102 watts out. And then this guy here says 12.4 volts. Let's change this over, change modes over to FM and just see if that's any different. Oh, more power going out on FM. 15.3 amps, 200 watts on FM. Let's change our band. Let's go down to 160. Let's go to FM, 17.4 on FM on 160 meters. FM on 80 meters is 15.3 amps. So you can see the difference in efficiency between the different bands. Let's skip 60 meters altogether because Yezu's weird about that and I don't feel like figuring it out. All right, 40 meters FM, 13.4 amps, 20 meters FM, 14.1 amps, 17 meters FM, 17.8 amps, 15 meters FM, 17.4 amps. This is more cyan in the camera and more green in person, but it's not really either of those two colors in person. All right, this is 12 meters FM, 15.8 amps, 28 is 10 meters, 16.5, and then this is 6 meters, 17.9. Nice. 18. So we just crested 18 amps draw on six meters right before I was ready to let go of the mic and write down my number there. So what you can do is you can figure out each band's amp draw because the manual only gives you the, the, the max current draw, which I think in this case is like 23. I'll put it on the screen. 23 amps draw on transmit, but you don't know what band that's on. You don't know what mode that's on, all kinds of stuff. This will give you intense amounts of information about your battery. Put one of these guys in your battery box, get it all programmed up for your battery and you are good to go. So in order to get the capacity portion of the display accurate, first fully charge the battery up. I'm, I'm pointing at the battery that you guys can't see. Fully charge the battery up, get it all connected, and then hold the up arrow for two seconds until it registers the full battery capacity. And then from there, you'll be able to take it down. This battery is not fully charged, but I can redo this at any time. Let me show you what it looks like when it is set to full capacity. I'm gonna hold this button in until it registers. There we go, 125 amps. And then you can see that's gonna start to go down as the, the fuel gauge is gonna start to empty out as the battery decreases in capacity. Let's empty the battery. 
hold the down arrow for two seconds, and now the battery is completely empty. It'll actually give you a runtime estimate, 67 hours, 75 hours left at the battery at 0.63 capacity. So 86 hours left in this battery, it's, it's climbing. 89 hours left in the, 92 hours left in the battery at 0.63 amps draw. So check the math and see. And this will have a little bit of a parasitic draw in storage. So either put an on off switch in so that you don't have that parasitic draw or just be aware of it and keep your battery at a relative state of charge on the way by. The backlight will go off. Let's see how much wattage it draws. Yeah, we're down to 0, 0.00 watts draw when the backlight on the display is off. So it's a not very intrusive monitor in terms of current consumption, but there is going to be some current consumed. And I guess 125 amp hour battery, it'd be, I don't know, a couple of years before it's totally drained. Who knows? This battery also has inside of it a Bluetooth monitoring program as well. So you can see if those two numbers jive up between the Bluetooth app inside and the external display. External display is a lot easier to read than grabbing your phone, loading the app, connecting over Bluetooth, waiting for the readings to come in, and then doing the readings. This is reading right now. So there you go. You've got your right now reading. I will leave a link in the description down below for this VATRER battery monitor and a compatible battery to go with it. I used a Power Queen battery today, but VATRER also does make their own batteries, and I have done some reviews on VATRER batteries on this channel in the past. On your way down to check those out, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way. It means a lot to me. It means the world to me when y'all hit that subscribe button. I like watching that number go up. It tells me that I'm doing a good job because YouTube is weird about stuff like that. In the meantime, there's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.